Hey, y'all. Today, we are talking about when you get knocked down and you can't get back up again right away. Because last week, we talked about job crafting and how to make your job as good as it can possibly be doing the things that you have control of. I did hear back from a lot of you who were excited about the idea of sort of tweaking your job and taking control and changing the parts that you could. But there were also a few of you who said, what do I do if I can't even imagine how I want things to be different? Like, I don't even feel like I can get out of bed some days. I don't know that I want to stay at this job, much less change it. I'm drowning. I'm barely barely making it to work, much less have the energy to job craft. So this podcast is for y'all. So as is often the case, when I sort of get an idea for a podcast or a blog in my head, the universe sends me downloads, or as my friend Caroline calls them, God winks. So we were in Waffle House Sunday, and the song by Chumbawamba came on. They had like a one-hit wonder, and you'll recognize it when I sing it, um, I get knocked down, but I get up again, and you're never going to keep me down or something like that. Anyway, it's one of those songs that it has the same lyrics over and over and over. So my son heard it in the background and he said, hey, has this group made any other songs? And turns out they did, but this was the only one that was a hit. So we sat there listening to the lyrics and I couldn't even understand the part that, you know, they're singing, uh, I get knocked down and I get up again. And then this woman's voice comes on and it's like, da, 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 da. okay, so when I looked it up, what she's singing is pissing the night away. And isn't that crude, but we're going to use that in today's um, podcast. So bear with me. So this is about when you get knocked down, because so many of my clients are in transition phases. They reach out to me because they're in the pit of despair, or they're really feeling like they're down on their luck, or they've started a new job. They got all excited. They started a new job. And then it's like three months in, it wasn't what they thought or the schedule really sucks, or they thought they were going to be getting a certain amount of benefits and it turns out they didn't, or divorce, like a client just went through a divorce and she's like, I thought I was supposed to be happy with the changes because this was supposed to be a positive change, but instead she finds herself completely down and out on the ground, not sure how to get back up again. So somebody sent me a podcast this week and it was, at first I thought it was kind of weird. It's an old man telling stories and he's kind of like telling these mythical stories and these fables. Um, and he's like a wise old sage. Um, so the first five minutes I was like, eh, I don't really think this is for me, but I kept listening. And he talked about something called good trouble and the point of his podcast or the point of this episode was there is a such thing as good trouble. Like as far back as time goes, since we were telling stories, you'll hear stories about the hero gets in trouble, the hero faces hardships, and then becomes a stronger and better version and then is able to help other people. That's called the hero's journey. So this guy was sort of relating it back to when we go through hard times, when we go through trouble. And the timing was perfect because I'm going to be completely honest with y'all. You know, we went on a marriage retreat like six weeks ago and everything was so hunky dory. You know, it was like, yay, we're in love again and all is well and I feel supported and he feels supported and our like love buckets, our love tanks were all filled up. And so the first time we got into a tiff, a disagreement, I found myself sinking. I was like, what? Oh no, here we go again. What am I going to do? Like this, this marriage retreat, I, I guess it didn't work. Here I am down again and, and I'm feeling all victimy and feeling sorry for myself. And here we go again. 
But the gal in this podcast was like, we don't get mad when winter rolls around. We don't say, I mean, what the bloody hell, Mother Nature? Like, it's cold and everything's dead. We don't do that. We just expect that nature is going to be cyclical. We expect that it's like a spiral. It's it's like it comes around. And so he was saying, like, why do we get so upset and feel so hopeless when rough times come around? Like, what if we just thought of them as good trouble and we expected them? And then when they came, we knew that it was going to last. It wasn't going to last. Like right now, fall is coming um, in Georgia. It comes very slowly. But by December, we will have cooler temperatures. We're starting to lose some leaves. And I don't love winter time, but every year I know that spring is coming again. And this just, the podcast was perfect because it gave me that, oh yeah, like this is not doom and gloom. This is not the end of the world. This is not, oh my gosh, we're arguing. This means we're, you know, doomed. Instead, it was like, oh, yeah, I've been here before. I've pulled myself up again. We've gotten right again. Um, And so this is about your careers and your jobs and your family life. When you find yourself down, this is how to get back up again. Um, Interestingly, with research, when they interview people, they always predict that they're going to be unhappy for much longer than they are when they hit a hard patch. And that the participants in the study predicted that it would take them a lot longer to recover than it actually did. And so this was regardless of whether it was an illness or they lost a loved one or they lost their job or they went bankrupt, whatever the case we always think that it's going to be much harder and much longer to kind of come back, to to float to the surface, to get back up. Um, and they even interviewed patients who were who became paralyzed. I think they were soldiers, but I can't swear by it. And they found that yes, they went through a horrible time where they're you know emotionally distraught, they're physically like torn to pieces, trying to get back some kind of semblance of a a normal life. Um, But they eventually, and it was like within a year and a half, they returned to their previous happiness levels. Isn't that crazy? So these were people who were paralyzed. And so the other thing I'll hear with clients is that if they're not going through something really bad, they may not feel like they have a right to be laying on the floor. I mean, especially like I just talked about paralyzed patients. Um, some of my clients are like, I mean, I have a job. I mean, it it pays the bills, it actually pays them really well. But I'm just like, oh, I just don't feel like getting out of bed in the mornings or I just, I, I'm just in a really bad spot. And they may beat themselves up because they don't feel like they have it bad enough that they deserve to like lay there and wallow. But this is not the case. Your pain is your pain. So if you're going through a rough patch, I give you permission to be on that floor. Lay on that floor as long as you need to. And we know that hardships or rough patches, it's like, a, it's a wave. I mean, you can think of it like this, like sometimes you'll be sucked under and you think that you are never going to come up for air again, but you will. Um, as humans, we have evolved over time to endure tremendous hardships, right? Right. And maybe you're nodding your head because you're like, yeah, yeah, this makes sense. But if you're the one going through it, if you are the one on the floor right now, it can it can just be really hard. I mean, you you can't see any hope, right? Um, my husband too. I've talked about you know Chase has gone through depression over time, and it's happened enough times by now that we sort of see signs. We have tools to keep him afloat. 
Um, but he still, he and I both will get really um, on the ground. We'll get really worried when his mood starts going down, um, you know, and he'll voice out loud like his, his fears, you know, what if none of these tools that I have works? What if hope finally says like, I'm tired of putting up with this and, you know, can't do this anymore. So instead of having these defeated feelings, first of all, know they're normal, no matter what you're going through. And second of all, know that this is not the end of the story. You're going to, it's going to come back around. It's like winter time right now, whatever you're going through and spring is going to come again. And there's no need to be mad at winter time. There's no need to fight it because it is what it is. I mean, it's, it's just there. You can't make it go away by being, um, by being really, you know, resentful of it. So I spent two podcast episodes preaching about positive psychology. So maybe now you're like, okay, is she telling me to expect bad things to happen? No, but also don't be surprised when bad things happen and don't let them knock you down and keep you down, right? All right, so the, um, the song says, I get knocked down. And so maybe you're at that point and you're not at the point in the song where he says, and I get back up again. I probably didn't say that right. I get, let's see, here's what he says. I get knocked down and I get up again. So you're not at the point in the song where you're getting up again. So a lot of these healthcare providers that I see, a lot of them are moms um, and they are at the knocked down place. Maybe it's burnout, maybe it's disappointment, maybe it's like a boss. So I hear a lot of hopelessness. I hear a lot of despair. And a lot of them, this is their first session. And they're sort of, you know, I, I go with the ocean metaphor. So they're drowning. They're at the bottom of the, they're getting sucked down. And they just want life to be normal again. They just want it to be over. And so my job at this point is to, pun intended, I guess, give them hope, give them hope that it's not going to last forever, and then slowly teach them tools to get back up. Um, so here's some things that I've learned over the years, and I'm going to share these with y'all. Um, I said this before, but I'm going to repeat it. So the pain will end. The wave will end. You're not, if you've ever been knocked down by a literal wave, it can be really scary. You might get the wind knocked out of you. You may get ocean water shoved into your sinuses, but you know that that wave is going to eventually abate and you're going to pop back up. The second thing is you can only do what you can do and you can only do it when you're able to do it. So I'm going to repeat that. You can only do what you can do, and you can only do it when you're able physically and mentally to do it. So one of the things I'll have my clients do is to brain dump all the stuff that has knocked them down. And this does a few things. They can see it on paper because a lot of times they don't realize how many things have happened in the last year. So you write it all down, like all the changes, even if they seem like good changes, you know, like having a baby, that's a supposed to be a good thing, but it's one of the most stressful things you can do to your body and your, <laughs> and your sleep and your brain and your relationship. I'm just going to be honest. All right. And then I'll have them go back and circle the things that they can do something about. So they have fallen down. I tell them lay there as long as you need to. But when you finally get to the point where you can get back up, then get up. Until then, don't beat yourself up about it. All right, so if you have a list in front of you, if you went through and you did this exercise and you circled, okay, well, there's, you know, 18 things on here and I circled six that I can do something about. All right, which ones should you do something about? Because just because you can does not mean you should. Can I get an amen? All right, I will be honest again. 
this popped up Friday with me. So one of my kids, you know, you have these grades and you have an app and these grades are coming over at the end of the grading season. And they are like, you know, popping up on my phone right and left. I can't even focus. So I was actually sitting in the office of my therapist waiting on her and I see this little thing come through and it was like, uh, Ollie got a zero on this activity, this test. And I'm like, what? A zero? A zero means you didn't do it. Um, and so I clicked on it and it said not turned in. And I'm like, oh crap, today's the end of the grading season. And it pulled her grade, an entire letter grade down for the class. Now she's in sixth grade. Does it really matter? Okay. But I looked at this and I was like, hey, I can do something about this. So I messaged the teacher. I said, hey, I noticed that she got a zero on this. Can she do it when she gets home? And the teachers responded, nope, it's the grading ends at 345. So I sat there and I thought about it and I thought, you know what? I can do something about this. I can go pick her up from school. It was like one o'clock. I can go pick her up. I can make her do this assignment. And then it's going to be in before the grades are due. And so I can do something about this. And then this little voice said, but should you? Should you really go micromanage the hell out of this situation? No, no, I should not. So even though I could, I should not. And I knew this deep in my soul. So I did not. And it actually worked out fine. I'm so glad I didn't do that. Turns out the teacher was looking at somebody else's grade. <laughs> and she didn't even get a zero. And I would have been so embarrassed if I'd marched up there in that school. So anyway, should you do something about it if you can? And if you can't do something about it, you have got to distance yourself from that. You've got to acknowledge it and you have to distance yourself from that. Okay, the next thing is to check in with your body. So this was like that little voice that said, heck no, you don't need to go pick her up. You don't need to go make her take this test. Check in with your body. Does it feel like you need to right now? So I've been in a job situation where I definitely was down on the ground. I knew that I wanted to leave. I knew that was the right thing. But I asked myself, like, does it feel right yet? And my body said no. My body said not yet. Like, that would amplify the stress hormones, the adrenaline, the like, it's not time yet. And so sometimes like being unemployed, you want to walk out of your job, but sometimes the unemployment would be even worse. And so only, you know, that, I mean, there are times maybe you need to walk out of your job, but ask yourself, like, what is your body telling you? And I can help you uh, figure this out. If you're at a loss as to what your body is trying to tell you, there are ways that I can kind of walk you through that. Um, yeah, so do you really need to do whatever it is your brain is pressuring you to do? Because you'll hear this voice saying, yeah, but it, a B, a, you know, if her grade changes, it's really going to affect her in college one day. And, you know, so your brain is trying to like, yeah, 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 like tell you all this stuff. But it's, it's your, what does your body say? Okay, um, the next thing is, what do you wish you had permission to do or not to do? And this is a big clue. So when I say that, what do you wish you had permission to do or not do? And that is a sneaky way of like, what does your heart say? What does your gut say? And then whatever it is you answer to that, like who, like you say, I wish I could... I used to say, I wish I could go stay in a hotel room. When my kids were little, I just wanted to go stay by myself. And then if I were coaching myself back then, I would have said, who says you can't? Who says you can't go stay in a hotel room? Who says you can't do that for your birthday or for Mother's Day or whatever, or just any old day? 
my husband would go on guy trips. He still does. Um, and I would think to myself, well, it must be nice. I wish I could do that, but somebody's got to stay here and be the kid's Uber driver or oversee the blah, blah, blah. And this is like in that song where the lady's voice comes in and she goes, pissing the night away, right? You're like pissing the night away. I hate that word. It's such a crude word, but this is what I'm talking about. Like life is the series of choices. And if you're blaming somebody else and thinking that somebody else needs to give you permission to do whatever it is that your body is telling you to do, then you need to quit you know, wanting the night away. All right. So the last, I think this is the last thing. Yes. Only when you're ready. So only pick yourself up when you are good and ready. And sometimes I talk to myself or about myself in third person. Like what would Hope do if she did know how to scrape herself off the ground? And this just sort of tricks your brain too. So it sort of removes you as the victim and you're like, well, what would she do? If she did know what to do, what would she do? If she did know how to get back up again, what would that look like? So in closing, you have been through this before. You may not believe me, but I want you to look back at all the times when you've been knocked down, breakups, bad grades, broken friendships, all the tears that you've shed over time. And maybe they didn't feel as bad as you feel right now. But if you're listening to this, if you're reading this, you did get back up again. You didn't let that wave like suck you down and keep you down. So ask yourself, like, am I giving myself the grace right now to like stay down as long as I need to like hang out down there for a little while? I mean, maybe you're comparing yourself to somebody else's pain. Um, during the pandemic, like we all got knocked down collectively in one way or another. And think about the growth that has occurred as a result of this. Yes, a lot of pain occurred. But we saw tremendous change, tremendous growth for so many people. You know, we finally said, like, I'm not going to wait around. I'm not going to stay down here anymore. I am going to do whatever. I mean, that's I wouldn't have taken a life coaching course if I hadn't been home on furlough for five months. Um, they call this U stress, E-U, and then the word stress. It's like good stress. So it's sort of like when you break your bone and it heals, it often heals stronger in the place where you broke it. When I, I lift weights now, which sounds so funny to say, I don't really think of myself. I'm not a weight lifter per se. I lift dumbbells. But I have noticed that if I can get to the point where it really hurts to do those whatever bicep curls, and then the next day I'm sore, if I keep that up over a few months, I can see a difference. I can see the growth of that muscle. Um, with dermatology, y'all, this is your final little dermatology tip of the year. Um, Retin-A. If you don't use Retin-A, and you are not pregnant or breastfeeding, you should consider using Retin-A. This is not really medical advice. This is just um, Hope, the life coach talking. Retin-A sloughs off the dead skin. So people don't love it at first. In fact, they will often call back and say, I can't believe you prescribed this. This is the awful. My skin is peeling off and they're flaking and all, all the dead skin is just like hanging out on this skin. Um, but guess what? If you keep it up, all that dead skin is going to shed off and you're going to have a glow. You're going to like look so much better. So anyway, um, if you are knocked down, if you're at that rough stage, don't give up. I promise this season is going to end. Spring is going to come up again and Reach out. If you would like to talk about this and you are down on the ground, just reach out. You can find all my information at coachhopecook.com. I will see y'all next week.